Google. Cool website. The best website gives you information from all around the world for free. But tell me this, you, the viewer, do you know how Google works? No? Yeah, that makes sense. You're watching my video, so you're not the brightest. Well, luckily for you, viewer, you little cutie pie, I spent some time researching how the heck Google works. It's pretty simple. I'm just kidding. It's complicated. Like, super complicated. They don't pay these engineers the big bucks for no reason. And I'm an idiot, so uh, some things may be wrong or overly simplified. So the professionals watching this, leave a comment for anything I get wrong. There's three main parts to Google, or well, a search engine. Crawling, indexing, and serving. Pretty simple, right? Yeah, I'm lying again. Each of these three parts are super complicated, so don't ever try to make your own Google search. You'll end up wasting your time. So let me show you how to make your own Google search. But before I do that, I gotta pay my bills. So let me introduce you to today's sponsor, SEO Writing. <laughs> yeah, we're doing this right now. SEO Writing is a tool that helps you automate your blog posts and articles. It's really easy to use. Let me show you. All you have to do is select a one-click blog post generator where you just need to type in your topic, select your AI model, and you're done. It's that simple. The nice thing about these articles is that it comes with images and relevant videos about your topic, which is pretty helpful. Plus, it's really customizable. When you're generating your article, you can customize a lot of settings for the images and for the videos. And if you need multiple articles or blog posts, you can use their bulk article generation feature where you can create up to 100 articles at once. Now, if you're worried about your article sounding AI generated, don't worry about it. SEO writing has a humanizer tool, and this tool lets you modify the article text to make it sound more human. So if you're looking for a tool that'll help you with your articles or blog posts, and you want to boost your website's SEO, you can check out SEO Writing. The link will be in the description. And if you use the code CODING25 at checkout, you'll get an exclusive 25% discount. You're welcome. Enough yap, let's start making our own Google. Have you ever wondered how Google knows about every website out there in the world? No? Oh. Frenchman walking down the street. The first part of how Google works, crawling. Google uses automated programs called crawlers or spiders to browse the internet or the web. This is how they discover all the web pages out there. Yes, even those spicy pages. Yeah, I know what you're looking up, you freakster. Have you ever wondered why the internet is also called the web? No? Oh. Each website or web page is linked to each other through hyperlinks, or you know, those blue letters. And with enough web pages, you'll start to notice that it looks like a spider web. The spider visits web pages by crawling through these links. Are you starting to understand these names? No, really? Spider web, spider, crawling through the web. Enough web lore, back to Google lore. Google's first task is to discover what pages exist on the web. The web is always changing and there's thousands of new web pages added every single day. So Google has to constantly search for new and updated pages. This is called a URL discovery. It's pretty simple. I'm lying again. Google already knows that some pages exist because they already visited them before. But Google discovers new pages by following a link from a known page to a new page. And sometimes they're discovered when you submit a sitemap to Google. Oh, you don't know what a sitemap is? All right, I forgot you're dumb. A sitemap is a file where you basically give information about the pages, so videos or any other files you have on your website. It basically makes it easier for Google to crawl the website. Now, once Google finds a new website or it wants to update a website, they crawl it. Google has a bunch of crawlers, but their main one is called Googlebot. But let me tell you a secret. Don't tell Google I told you this. There's actually two Googlebots, one for desktop and one for mobile. Keep it a secret. So here's how Googlebot works. It uses an algorithm to determine if the website should be crawled, how often it should be crawled, and how many pages to fetch. I don't know the algorithm. Google keeps it a secret. It's their secret formula because the internet would probably abuse it. If the internet had access to this, you would probably have garbage and spam in your search results, and we don't want that. So if it decides to crawl the page, it's just gonna grab the information from the website. What if I don't want Googlebot to crawl my websites? I have some secret spicy stuff on it. Well, that's not a problem, weirdo. You can tell Googlebot to not crawl your website by using a robots.txt file. Wow, okay, really? It's basically a file that Google has to listen to. Enough yap, you're probably bored. So let me show you how to start making your own Google. We're gonna call this crawler Slothbot because unlike Googlebot, it's slow and only for demonstration purposes. I'm not gonna optimize this, I'm lazy. The code here is pretty simple. I'll have this code in my newsletter, Slothbytes. What? You don't know what Slothbytes is? <laughs> if you haven't noticed, Slothbytes is a newsletter where I share bite-sized programming information to make you a better programmer. It's free. So sign up, don't, I don't care. What you're looking at here is a simple version of a web crawler. All it does is it visits a URL, which in our case is a Wikipedia article about Google, and then it's gonna grab all the links that are on the web page. Once it grabs the links, it's gonna put them into our list of URLs to visit later. We're then gonna move on to 
to the next URL and repeat the process. Super simple. You would learn this in an introduction class. If you're confused, then I don't know what to tell you. It's not like there's a website that lets you search things up. What's with the time.sleep? Good question, smarty pants. The time.sleep is to make sure we don't overload the website servers. And it also makes it harder for the website to detect if it's a bot because we could get banned from websites for doing this, which is a big no-no because if we get banned, we can't crawl the website anymore. Uh, yeah, probably should have added a dis- this is a super simplified version of what crawlers like Googlebot do. Oh, you want to see what a more advanced crawler looks like? Sure, why not? Check out how much faster it is. Oh, and by the way, I have no idea if this crawler is correct. Uh, it does what it needs to do, but um, I don't know if I could have done it better. It works, that's all that matters. This is a more advanced crawler. I'm not gonna explain this because I'm too lazy, but if you wanna check out the code for yourself, you know where to go to. Slothbot. Google handles billions of pages, so you can only imagine what their crawler is like. So step one is crawling, which lets us grab the web pages. Step two is indexing. Indexing is basically the part after we yoink a website. It needs to understand what's on it. We use the information from the yoinked website and we save useful information. Another way to think about it is whenever you Google something and you see the web page information, that's some of the information from indexing. Google saves this information to what's called the Google Index. It's a large database hosted on thousands of computers, which is pretty expensive. How expensive? I don't know, probably a few billion dollars. No big deal. After Google crawls a page, it looks at everything. This could be the title of the website, description of the website, and you know, every single word on the website. Wait, did you just say every single word? Google basically saves everything from your website. They might save a little too much information, but um, don't worry about that. Let me show you how to create your own index. This right here is as basic of an index as you can get, probably. All we're doing here is just grabbing and saving the page title, URL, and description if it has one. If it doesn't, we're just going to use the first 200 words on the page. The last thing we're going to store is every single word on the web page. Yes, you heard me right. Every word. We need this because we need to know what this page is about. Since we're talking about indexing and because this is my video, let me explain some other cool big brain techniques that Google does to make your searches possible. Big brain technique number one, inverted indexing. It sounds fancy, right? It's actually pretty simple. Instead of storing websites with all the words they contain, Google flips it around. They store words with all the websites that contain them. It's a small difference, but it makes searching way faster. And it makes sense for a search engine. Whenever you go on Google, you don't look up a website to find your question. You look up your question to find some websites. When you search for something like Hawk Tua, Google doesn't go through every single word of the website looking for it. It goes straight to their index database and it looks for words that contain Hawk and Tua. And then it's gonna pull up all the web pages that contain those words. Big brain technique number two, stop words. Stop words are super common words like the, is, at, which, and on. They're everywhere, but they're not really helpful for your search. So what does Google do with them? Yeah, they just toss them out. Let's do an example. Let's say I searched up, how do I clear my internet browser history? And this makes perfect sense to a human, but to a computer, it's unnecessary. You're just yapping. So we can actually remove some words. We can remove how, do, I, and my. These are stop words, which means all the computer needs to hear is clear internet browser history. That's all it needs to know. It saves time and storage space, which makes searching faster. Editor Sloth here. Google doesn't remove stop words anymore because we can use them with machine learning to give us better search results. If you're curious, look up BERT. Big brain technique number three, stemming. This one's all about about chopping words down to their roots. So imagine words like running, runner, and runs. They all come from the root word run. Why is this important? It's important because Google can match your search query with more relevant results, even if the exact words aren't used. So if you search for running tips, it would be the same as if you searched up runner tips or run tips. Okay, that's enough big brain techniques for now. Let's move on to step three, serving. This might be the most important step of them all. We have all the website information that we need, but how does Google determine which websites should be at the top page? Okay, I'm not surprised, because if you did know this, then you actually work at Google. Give me a job, please. This right here is Google's secret formula because Google uses a lot of different things for it and they're super secret, but I can share one way they do it. And it's the original algorithm that started Google and they still use it today. It's called PageRank. It's basically an algorithm that decides which pages are more important based on how many other pages link to it. Remember what I said about the web, every website is connected with hyperlinks and the founders of Google were really smart and they thought, why don't we rank web pages based off these links? There's a lot of fancy math for it and I don't have the brain cells to explain it because um, 
um, this is a PhD paper and I barely passed my introduction to programming classes. So um, check out these videos if you're a nerd and like math, but I'm gonna at least explain a super simplified version of it. So here's how it works. Think of it like a popularity contest or a voting system. Every link is a vote. So every time a web page links to another page, it's like casting a vote for that page. The more links a page has, the more important it seems. But PageRank also has a quality over quantity system. Not every vote is equal. A link from a big reputable website is worth more than a link from some random blog no one reads. So with this voting system, the pages with the highest scores show up at the top of your search results. So whenever you do a Google search, the top pages are the ones with the highest page rank score. Once people realized how page rank works, they try to abuse it, which is not surprising because this is the internet after all. One way they try to abuse it is with quantity over quality. As long as you got a lot of links on your website, it didn't matter where it came from. But another way they try to abuse the system is with link exchanges, where it basically went like this. Hey buddy, I'll link your website if you link mine. Yeah, that's basically it. Another way people try to abuse the system, link farms. Link farms are basically just a bunch of websites linking back and forth to boost their rankings. And surprisingly, it actually worked. Thanks to these link farms, search results started getting cluttered with garbage. It was just filled with spam. So what did Google do? They stopped it. They updated their algorithm to detect these link farms. So they made PageRank more complicated. Okay, that was a lot of yapping. Let's finally program PageRank. Okay, so the way this works is I basically copied and pasted this formula right here. I don't understand the formula. Well, guess what? I already said it. I'm too lazy to explain it. So Google it or watch these videos or, 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 or you can check out Sloth Bites because I might write about it soon. Anyways, we now have all three parts of Google, the crawling, the indexing, and now the serving. So let's finally test this out. Congratulations, my friend. We have successfully created our own Google search. That's worse in every possible way, but it's ours. Congrats. Now that we've created our own Google search and you're still watching this video for some reason, you're probably wondering what is Google going to look like in the future? No? Oh. AI. 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 AI.